I think I'm a little bit too excited for this video today. Today I'm going to be making just a really simple vermicompost bin. A vermicompost bin is a worm compost bin. You pretty much use composting worms to take your kitchen waste and turn it into fertilizers. This is some seriously good organic fertilizer. If you've ever heard of worm castings or black gold in the gardening community, this is what they're talking about. They're talking about the castings that worms give you after they eat all of your waste. Worm castings are just teeming with all kinds of microbes and all sorts of super awesome stuff that's going to be helping your plants. And this is something you can make in your home. I'm talking in an apartment, in a house, in your backyard, wherever it is that you want to put it. This doesn't give off any kind of smell as long as you're doing it right. So I'm going to stop telling you about it and I'm going to show you about it. Let's get back there. I'm going to show you how to make a really simple DIY vermicompost bin to get you started in the worm composting world. Let's talk about what you need to create a worm bin. First off, you need your bin. And really, this can be any size bin that you want. This one here is a 27 gallon tote. It's one of the, what is it? A Command XXL tote. They're really heavy duty. We use these a lot for just storing things in the garage and we had this one extra. So I didn't pay anything extra for it. So if you have t totes or anything that are laying around, use that. Don't go out and buy something that you don't really need to. You're gonna need a drill. And I'm using a quarter inch drill bit today. You're gonna need some bedding. And for bedding, you can use quite a few different things. What I've got here is a bunch of compost. I also have some shredded paper. And I'm also gonna be putting a little bit of peat moss in there. People use anything from coca core to shredded newspaper to shredded cardboard to unfinished compost. There's a whole lot of different things you can use. Moving on to the worms, we have 1,000 worms here. And these are from Uncle Jim's Worm Farm. From everything I can see, this is kind of the industry standard. Everybody kind of goes to Uncle Jim's. The quality is really good. All the reviews are really good. So that's why I went with these guys. Anything that you see here today, I'll make sure I put a link down in the description for. Most of this stuff you can just pick up on Amazon, even the worms. Everything is really easy to come by. The first thing we're going to do here is start drilling some holes in our tote and we want to put a lot of holes in the bottom and that, that way the leachate can come out of the bottom and what the leachate is is just kind of the leftover residual uh, moisture that is going to be coming out out of the bottom. If you do a really good job of keeping it just the perfect amount of moisture you're not really going to have a whole lot of leachate, nothing to worry about there. Either way you want to have something down on the bottom to catch it, not only so it doesn't just go out and fall over the floor wherever you put it, but also because you want to capture that and use it as a fertilizer in your garden. It's a really good fertilizer. Hopefully it doesn't gross you out too much because it's actually a really cool process. But first let's get some holes drilled on the bottom of this. Now I'm just going quarter inch holes and I'm going with quarter inch because that's big enough for the worms to move through. So once eventually down the road when I turn this into a stacking system, the worms will be able to flow through these holes on the bottom here. And the battery died. I'll be back. <laughs> There we go, all done. I'm gonna bring it in closer so you can kind of see the method to my madness here. All right, here's the bottom of the tote. As you can see, I kind of heavily focused on these ridges here. And the reason for that is when you flip this over and it's sitting upright, these are the, gonna be the lowest point of your worm bin. So when the liquid falls down to the bottom of the tote, it's not gonna pool up in these ridges. It's actually gonna come out of the tote and not get stuck down in the bottom here. So that's why I focus really heavily on these ridges here. Made sure I got plenty of holes in there just for some really good oxygen and drainage. The next thing we're gonna do is drill holes right along the top here, all the way around the tote. And the reason for that is we need to add, make sure there's oxygen inside of this tote. It can't go anaerobic. We need to make sure everything's nice and oxygen, oxygenated, oxygen, oxygenated on the inside. So let's go ahead and get started with these holes. All right, let's come in here and kind of show you the spacing, what we've got going on over here. This isn't an exact science <laughs> at all. So I just put holes along the whole top here about that spacing all the way around. You can probably tell that I didn't put any holes in the lid and that's because the lid is gonna sit underneath the bin and that's what's actually gonna catch the leachate that comes out of the bottom. The next thing we're gonna do is start adding some bedding into the bin. This is just some compost that we had. I'm gonna dump this in here. Kind of get a good amount there. When you're doing this, you don't want to put too much in here at one time. I'm only going to put, put a few inches of bedding in here. These worms like to hang out in the top few inches of the bedding. So if you make it a really deep bedding, they're not going to be going down and eating all that material down there on the bottom. So you want to make sure you keep it nice and nice and shallow at first. And then as you add to it and as you're adding food and as they're giving you more and more worm castings, then you'll start filling your bucket up. But you, you don't want to start with a full bin. All right, the next thing I'm going to add is some shredded paper. Now I'm going to add some peat moss. I'm not going to add a whole lot of peat moss. I'm just kind of putting it in there for some extra fluff. All right, now let's get this mixed up. 
All right, for the rest of this, I'm gonna bring you guys in close so you can see what's going on in here. At this point, we have all of our bedding mixed together really nicely, but one thing we don't have is the moisture content that we need. And with this bedding, you want it to be about the moisture content of a wrung out sponge. So just a little bit damp, you don't want it too wet, but this is all pretty, pretty dry. So let's go ahead and add some water to this and get this to where it needs to be. All right, let's see where this gets us. That is perfect. I'm not gonna be able to squeeze any water out of here, but it's still damp. And we've got probably roughly three inches of, of bedding material in here. I'm gonna level this all out, make it all nice and pretty, and then I'm gonna add the worms. That's the exciting part, right? So I know these are packaged in some dry peat moss. So these worms are supposed to look dry. They're supposed to be kind of uh, slow moving, looking small kind of dehydrated because everything in here is dry. So let's see how these are gonna come to us, yeah? All right, so I can already see quite a bit of movement in there. I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but there we go. Got tons of worms just in there moving around. So let's get them in here. I'm not gonna disturb them too much. I'm just gonna let them sit just like that. Once these worms get settled, so probably later on this evening, I'm gonna add some food in here for them. And I also have some burlap coming today that I'm gonna lay over the top of this. It's just kind of like a, like a, a lid to the whole system. What can happen at this point is worms can start crawling up your bin trying to escape until they get settled. Right now, they don't know that there's gonna be food given to them every week. They don't know that this is gonna be a good home. So they're gonna try to escape this tote and that's completely normal. All right, so let's try to get a good shot of these worms in here digging around. They're already starting to move down. Every single one, you can just see them diving straight down into the into the bedding there. So that's what they're do, they'll do. Just, they'll kind of work their way down. I'm not gonna bury them. I don't wanna stress them any more than I need to. I'm just gonna leave them right like that. They're gonna work their way down into the bedding and then I'm gonna start adding some food. So later this evening, we'll bust this back open and start adding some food for them. Before we put these guys inside to relax, let's talk about the types of worms that you need. These are called red wigglers and they're specifically for composting. They do a really good job of composting. They eat their body weight in a day in food. So what that means is if you have a thousand worms, which is roughly one pound, and that's what I got, they're gonna eat roughly one pound of food per day. So what I'll be doing is I'll be feeding them probably five pounds at a time. I'll put it in their tote, and then as long as they finish that within about a week, then I will be giving them more food. You don't wanna give them so much food that they can't eat it within five to seven days. Once you do that, you're gonna start dealing with mold issues, and you're gonna start getting fungus gnats and just some nasty, nasty stuff. You, if you do this correctly, there is no smell associated to this. So if you do start to smell something, that means you're doing something wrong, and you might wanna start adding more browns and less food to your compost. These red wigglers, they will self-regulate, and what that means is I put a thousand worms in here. Well, if I'm giving them as much food as they can eat, they're gonna be reproducing really quickly. So before I know it, instead of having a thousand worms in here, I can have 2,000, 3,000. And then at that point, if I'm filling this tote relatively quickly, I can actually split this tote into another tote and just move the worms along with it. So you don't have to buy worms after you buy them the first time. I've seen people that put 20 worms into a worm bin and within 90, 100 days, they have a thousand worms just like I just put in here. So to get started with worms, yeah, you have to buy some, but once you actually buy them, they reproduce really quickly. And as long as you're giving them the space and the food that they need, they're gonna keep reproducing. So you can just keep splitting them if you want more totes. Don't use just regular earthworms or anything like that because those can be territorial and they're not made for composting. These worms here are specifically designed to eat the kind of food that you're gonna be putting in here. Now on that subject, let's talk about the types of foods you can put into this bin. Now you can pretty much put any kitchen scraps into this bin, your normal lettuce, tomatoes, uh, cabbage, any, any of your normal you know, broccoli, cauliflower, all of that stuff is gonna be good in here. The things you wanna steer clear of is don't do too much citrus, don't do too many onions and don't do anything dairy. You also don't want to put any animal manure in here thinking that it's like a normal compost bin. You want to keep everything uh, plant-based. Now the ideal temperature for these guys, so if you're wanting to do this outdoors, the ideal temperature for these worms is going to be between 60 and 80 degrees. And inside your bin it might actually be a little bit cooler, like if you have it in the shade in your yard, it might actually end up being a little bit cooler inside the tote than it is actually outside. They're 
peak performance, if you will, is gonna be between 60 and 80 degrees, and this is Fahrenheit. If they drop down below that, they'll still live, or down below that or above that, they're still gonna live, but they're not gonna be producing as well as they could be. If you drop down below 40 degrees Fahrenheit or above 95 degrees Fahrenheit, that's when your worms are gonna start dying. So make sure you don't go above or below those temperatures. But if you keep right between 60 and 80 degrees, so for me, that's the temperature of our house. My wife has a, <laughs> The biggest room in the house is, is for my wife's house plants. She has a whole plant room, so this will be going in her plant room, and that stays roughly 75 degrees, so it's gonna be perfect for these worms. I think the absolute best temperature is about 77 degrees, so I'm gonna be right there within that range. It's gonna stay there all year long. Okay, I'm gonna go let these guys rest inside. Once they're inside, I'm not gonna touch them. I'm not gonna bother them. I'm just gonna let them do their thing for a few hours, and then later on today, once they're all inside the compost here, I'm gonna put in some food. I'll show you guys exactly what I'm feeding them, how to feed them, and then I'll also talk about when it comes to harvest time how you're going to be harvesting out of here because when you harvest you don't want to be pulling the worms out with it so i'll show you how to harvest without pulling worms out the mailman came earlier i got my burlap we've got the bedding in there we've got the worms in there all that's left is to feed these worms so let's bring it in close so that way you can check that out so this is what this worm bin looks like at the moment this is just normal burlap i got it on amazon everything i use here today i'll make sure there's a link down in the description below so what i'm going to do is pull this burlap off and all this burlap does is this is just kind of like a little cap for your compost system so pull this little cap off and now as you can see there's no worms up here anymore they've all kind of dug down I can starting to see a couple worms here and there so they're all nice and settled in so now we need to get them fed the way I'm gonna do this system is I'm gonna feed on one side I'm gonna let the worms feed right there and then when they finish all that food I'm gonna come over here and feed on the other side so that way they're always migrating back and forth and what that does is as this gets more full and more full I'm gonna be ready to harvest it but I don't want to harvest any of the worms out. So what I'll do is I will put all the food on one side. All the worms will move across the bin over to start eating the, from the one side. And then I'll come on this side and harvest these castings on this side. All the worms will migrate over there. There won't be any over here. You'll just have nice worm castings on one side while the other side's being fed. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna dig this down a little bit. So I'm gonna dig this down just because I want to make sure I cover these scraps. Here's what I'm feeding them today. This is a mixture between lettuce, broccoli, cauliflower, banana peels, apple cores, all sorts of stuff. But what I did is I put it in here and then took some scissors and just really cut them up really finely. How fast your worms go through this is kind of dependent on the size of food you put in. So if you put a giant piece of something in here, it's gonna take them a lot longer to break that down. But if you cut it up nice and small, it, they're gonna be able to work through it quicker. And one way to go even faster than that is if you blend it up in a blender and pretty much make it into liquid, then you can dump it in here and they'll eat it even faster. I'm not gonna go quite that far. <laughs> I'm just gonna put these pieces in right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these right there. And now I'm gonna cover it back up. So I'm gonna cover all those back up for the most part at least. And now what I'll do is I'll put the burlap back on Now that the burlap is on, I still want to put a lid on this. You don't have to, but I'm going to. I'm still going to leave a lid underneath it, and then I'll put the lid on top of it. The lid's going to stop any light from going in. The burlap's going to keep everything nice and moist, kind of keep a blanket on top of the worms. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this inside. I'm going to check back in on this in a few days, and we will see how much of this food those worms have eaten and kind of see what pace we need to be feeding them. Here we are. It's been exactly one week since I started the vermicompost bin. Today is Sunday, and on Thursday, my plan was to open up the worm bin and show you exactly how much food the worms have eaten so far. Well, instead what happened is my son decided he wanted to be born three weeks early, so we spent a few days in the hospital. Mom and baby are doing great. So now it's giving me a few extra days between Wednesday and Sunday, so let's go back there and check it out and see exactly how much food those worms have eaten. Here's what the worm bin is looking like right now. This is where I put the food in a week ago. On this side, you can still see there's some paper and stuff that we're seeing over here. You're seeing some lettuce up here on the top. So let's dig in right around here and see how much food they've actually eaten. Oh, nice. Okay, so I'm seeing tons of worms. I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but there's a lot of worm activity in here. There's a little bit of food right here. And as I get lower, I'm seeing more worms. Nice. There's a little tiny, tiny bit of food left in here, but it's kind of the bigger chunks. You need to check this out. This is, this is what we're looking for. Look at this super dark, rich material that we're getting from these worms. And this is from one week of them being in here. And wow. That is awesome. Yeah, there's there's a ton of worms down here. This is where all the worms are kind of located. Let's check, let's see over here how many worms we're gonna find if we dig around over here. There's one worm 
so yeah, the uh, the method looks like it's gonna hold true. We've got a couple worms over here, not a whole lot, but over here where we had all the food located is where all the worms are kind of congregating. Now, what we're gonna do, like I said, we're gonna last time we fed on this side, we fed them over here. So this time we're gonna feed them right over here. I'm gonna add some food back into there. And what this is is. When we, were, when we spent time in the hospital, I wasn't harvesting my garden. So what happened is we had some overripe tomatoes, overripe cucumbers, broccoli. I took some leaves from a cabbage plant and I just kind of chopped them all up, mixed them all up in here, chopped them as small as I could. And now I'm gonna be adding this in here. This is about twice as much food as far as weight goes than I put in last time. Now that the worms are actually up and eating, it took them a week to eat the one pound or so I put in there. So now I'm gonna put two pounds in. I'm gonna see how long this takes them to eat. So let's go ahead and Dump this in right here. Okay, that's a good amount of food right there. I think this is gonna take them a little while to finish this off. So now what I'm gonna do, same thing as last time, come over here and I'm just gonna kinda cover this food up. There we go, just like that. All right, let's cover these guys back up with this burlap here and the burlap just here for a nice little lid to the system. I'll be making plenty more videos about worm composting, the ins and outs, how to do it, what not to do, everything you could possibly think of. If you have specific questions on worm composting, leave them down in the comments below. That way I can get to those videos first. If you got value from this video, go down and hit the like button, share it with all your friends, and then after that, go watch this video right here. If you enjoyed this video, you're gonna enjoy this one too, and I'll see you over there.